各位观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎大家收看《天天话题》加拿大版《风华资讯》，我是主持人苏慧文苏丹娜。在人类文明的发展中，文学作为一种艺术的形态而存在，那么它也是人们表达情感、表达思想和表达价值的一种重要的形式。那它也引发人们对于生活、对于人性的思考。那文学呢，是艺术的灵魂。那么在很多人的青春时代当中呢，都有过对于文学的梦想和对于作家的梦想。那在温哥华呢，就有一位中学生，他敢于追逐自己的文学梦想，是成功的发表并出版了一部小说，并且呢，他的服装设计和他的画作呢，也是广受欢迎。那今天呢，我们就为大家邀请到了这位中学生 Peter Fu 和他的老师们来到我们的节目当中，与大家一起来分享他的文学梦想之路。Hi everyone, welcome to our show. So at the beginning, could everyone um Say hi to our audiences and make a short introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa Evans, and I'm the head of Collingwood School here in West Vancouver. We are very excited to welcome you into our school. Thank you. Hello, my name is Peter Fu or Jinhao Fu.、Um, I'm a grad at Collingwood School in West Vancouver, and I am the author of All Under Heaven, as well as the illustrator and cover illustrator. Hello, everyone. My name is Brad Jolliff. I'm the assistant director of student life here at Collingwood, and I also have taught creative writing. Yes, thank you, everyone, for joining us. So, Peter, I know that you are very passionate about writing. Can you tell us why you like writing in the first place? Why do you like writing? 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 Why do you like Well, I'll be honest、um, with you. I don't think I really fell in love with writing. It was—it's always been a means to an end for me. And that might be—that might come as a surprise to a lot of people because they generally think, "Oh, you're such a great author. You're such a great writer. You should—you should—you should, probably love writing." Well, no. It's like a—it's a means to which you can express ideas. I love ideas. That's—that's my—that's the whole gist of this, right?、Um, All under heaven to me is an idea. It's not—it's less a book. It's more of an idea.、Uh, and so, in my opinion. The best way of expressing this idea was through the book. In this, in this, at this point, that's also why there's also、um, art as well as、um, uh, fashion and costume、uh, in *All Under Heaven* as well.、Um, but the book itself just happens to be set within a grander sort of、mm -hmm. *All Under Heaven* universe,、um, and it is a sort of a glimpse into what occurs within within this world. 嗯哼 ，Yes。那我知道呢，你也是非常的热爱历史，而且是读了非常多的历史的书籍。So you are very interested in history as well. So could you talk about your inspirations for the book and uh, uh, how your thoughts came into it? Yes. So, I mean, just like how、um, Tolkien or R. Martin were inspired by history in their writing of their books, it's sort of the same process, right?、Um, I'm sure they've also They're also very familiar with history as well. You can tell if you read their books, but、um, all in every sort of goes in the same way. I take certain influences and ideas from historical concepts,、uh, especially、um, the concept of the collapse of multi-ethnic states and multi-ethnic empires. That is something that I research quite.、Um, that I use a lot of the research from this in in All Under Heaven. As well, certain important things that, that I should point out is that in other words, I focus on things that are more realistic.、Um, I'm more of a realistic fiction writer. I don't. I'm, I'm nothing against fantasy or anything like that. But all in Heaven is not is not fantastical. It is a sci-fi book, but there is no magic, for example, and everything、um, that occurs is somewhat. Within, at least I hope, is somewhat within the realm of possibilities, right?、Um, so when it comes to, for example, governance, or,、um, or for example, there's a large amount of the book which is focused on conflict, and so these conflicts and with the government, that and that sort of stuff is all very much based off of things that occurred in areas similar or analogous to,、um, to what happens in all other heaven. So you take sort of you take stuff in in history. You use it as a way to determine、um, whether or not the book and stuff inside of the book is realistic, and it's an it's an it's an influence. 
嗯 ，Yes, and you have lots of interesting ideas as well. 像是你在这本书中呢，就是有一个呃关于未来世界的一个构想，而且呢，你还是创造了三种不同的语言，新的语言啊，可以跟我们分享一下吗 ？So in this book, uh, it's about a world in the future, and also you created three different languages, new languages for this world. So could you share your creation uh to introduce to this audiences? Right. So. Um, when we talk about another heaven, I think it's important first to to consider the world in which it is set in. Um, I'll try to go as quick as possible, but generally it goes like this: um, All of heaven is set on an exoplanet called Elysia in the 39th century. This exoplanet was colonized and terraformed by humans some point in the 25th or 26th century. Um, However, right after this moment, right after there was、um, a great amount of settlement from from Earth on Elysia, there was a great apocalyptic event that nobody really knows what caused it, but、uh, nobody really knows what it was. But it pretty much ended what was a very modern and futuristic humanity. So after this point,、um, technology rapidly collapses to、uh, and regresses to something like the Dark Ages,、um, which forces Um, a lot of,、um, but like, but after this point, there's a sort of,、um, a sort of a, a rebuilding of civilization that occurs.、Um, by the 39th century, what has happened is、um, there is this new great power in the in the world called the Celestial Empire, which governs the world, which is、um, a theocratic monarchy of sorts that believes its rulers are descended、um, from. Reincarnations, well, not of reincarnations, but like physical manifestations of the primary god of their pantheon,、uh, called the Great Above,、um, and this, this, and the religion shuns the practices and pretty much anything to do with the world before the Great Apocalypse as something that was wrong and problematic and should be avoided,、um, lest there be a second Great Apocalypse. This is why you'll see. That they'll often refer to science, democracy, and communism,、uh, which are very common things that that were that occurred on this pre-fall planet, as terrible things that should be avoided、um, because they could cause a second great apocalypse. And the main reason for this, as well, this this fear of doing something wrong, is because they believe there will be a second apocalypse at one point or another that. Might、um, end all of humanity, right? Sort of like as the first apocalypse was caused by a some sort of moral、um, sin or wrongdoing,、um, and that if there is no immediate change in the morality of humanity, then there would be a second great apocalypse. But this entire sort of fear and concern over the apocalypse is mainly caused by the lack of understanding. Of what caused the original apocalypse.、Mm-hmm, yes, and、uh, it's very interesting, and that I believe that you put lots of work and time into it. So along this、uh, way of creating this book, have you met any obstacles? 有没有遇到过一些挑战？是怎么克服的 ？So how did you overcome those obstacles? Pressing obstacle was that I constantly tried to revise the 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 book and try to change it because I thought like I would I would write a bit and then. My writing skill would improve, improve, and then I'd think the old bit was bad. So, what what I、uh, what the, the problem that I always had was that I would write a bunch, and then I realized that the the first part I didn't really like, so I just rewrite. I had to go and rewrite the first part, and then that happened、uh, th- quite a few times. In fact, I actually had to rewrite the first the first par-、uh, the first chapter eleven times,、wow. something like that. Um, there's probably there's probably hundreds of pages of stuff that no one will ever see because I think it's bad. Um. But you know who knows? I have it in a folder, and I might reuse it one day or another.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's all an important aspect of、yes. sort of、um, my development in in creative writing. And also along the way, the school and your teachers helped you a lot. So could the teachers share on、um, maybe how the school can help、uh, students like Peter to write maybe through creative writing courses and uh, uh, how you prepare them for university, which、uh, a better、uh, understanding of writing is necessary. Yes,、um, English is a foundational skill. At the youngest of ages, we call it language arts, and we really talk about 
the ability to read and write and to share your ideas. And so that is part of the curriculum right from our youngest students starting in kindergarten up to Peter's grade in grade 12. And what you see over the years is uh, an evolution of skills and ways for students to express their ideas differently with an emphasis really on uh, exploring ideas, writing them, and then going back and iterating on your ideas. So Peter's comment about taking 11 times to write the opening chapter is an English teacher's dream because it speaks about that desire to do more than one draft, to really work on the craft of writing, thinking about vocabulary, sentence structure, how the ideas flow. Am I actually creating imagery through my words? Uh, is what I'm expressing something that somebody can understand if they just pick this up and they're in a different part of the country or the world from where I am. So I think it's those kinds of pieces of understanding about how to express your ideas, to find your own personal voice in your writing, and that ability to go back and say, you know, this isn't good enough. I really want to focus and refine and make this even a better piece of work um, that really holds students in good stead in a good position to be successful whether they're in school or heading off to their universities uh, to study whatever topics they might need because that ability to communicate is going to be central to life. Mm -hmm. And also just uh, one last part is that many of the parents are wondering that uh, if their kids go on to writing books and novels, what will affect them in their school? How is Peter doing academically? Yeah, Peter does really well academically. Um, throughout his courses, he's often extending on the range of skills that we expect students to do. And I think that comes from his willingness and openness to really think abstractly and creatively, which was probably born from his want and desire to actually write um, as a hobby, as a starting point, and not just academically. So I think they can complement each other really well. Yes, thank you for sharing. So thank you everyone for sharing. And next we'll take a break. Next we'll take a break.